Hi there, in this video we're going to be finding the basis for a null space as opposed to the previous video where we found the basis of the row space and the column space. Now it's a slightly different procedure for finding the basis for the null space, but the first initial step, sorry that was redundant, the first step is the same. You find the row reduced echelon form of this matrix right here, so that's what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to subtract the third row to the first row, having it look like this as my row operation. So this would be just a bunch of zeros at the bottom. Then I'll multiply the middle row by one half. I'll get one, one, two, one, one right there and zero, so forth. Now, if I subtract a second row to the first row, I'll have one, zero, one, then just one, one, zero. And this would be my row reduced echelon form and just a few row operations. So now that we have this, we're gonna multiply it by the some variables x1, x2, and x3, corresponding to the rows, row, the row one, row two, up to three. So we're multiplying it by this. And if we went through the multiplication, you'll see that x1 is going to apply to all of the, all of the, what should I call it, the components right here for that one and everything going downward essentially, or rather x1 specifically would be this column, x2 is going to be the middle, and x3 would be the third, the third column right there. So the reason I'm telling you this is because x1 multiply 0 is nothing, so we ignore that. However, x1 multiply 1 is something, so we'll just say that's over here, x1 and plus. So what else is inside this particular row? We have this over here. And what is that? Well, remember I said that's x3, because the x3 is being applied to this entire column, so there's an x3 right there, so x3. And we ignored the x2 because that's a zero, and x2 multiplies zero is just zero, and it doesn't matter. So the reason I'm making these is, uh, you'll see that soon, we have to make a few more of them for the other rows. Just one more row, actually. So what is this one? Well, notice we have nothing in x1, so we ignore that. x2 multiplied this does exist, so let's write an x2 down here, plus, because we have one more. x3 multiplied that, of course, that one would be this. And these two are going to be set to zero. And we're setting them to zero because we're going to substitute something inside to figure out uh, what vectors are inside the basis for the null space. So let's just, uh, first we need to recognize which of these variables here, x1, x3, and x2, are independent or dependent. Now if you look at this matrix here, the row reduced echelon form, the independent, rather I should say the dependent variables, are the ones that are essentially leading ones. The one, like this one right here that has a zeros below it, and this one right here that has a zero above it and a zero below. These are the dependent variables. So that those correspond to x1, remember because x1 gets multiplied there, and this one's x2. So x1 and x2 are our dependent variables. And when we're doing, we're trying to find the basis for the null space, we want to keep our dependent variables on the left-hand side of these two equations here. So let's just go ahead and put all of our, our independent variables, the other ones, to our right-hand side. So x1 and x2 are, are our dependent. That means x1 is going to equal negative x3, and x2 will equal negative x3 as well. Now that we have that, we're going to do the final step, which is to substitute a 1 for our independent variables here. So what if we put a 1 inside this first equation right here, uh, specifically inside x3? That would give us a negative 1 right there. But just because we're putting it inside x3, that tells us that in this particular case, x3 is going to equal 1. And because x3 is 1, try to imagine that there, uh, x1 is going to equal negative 1, right? because x3 is a 1 right there, multiply negative. So x1 is negative 1, and that's what we have for the first part there. Imagine now down here, this next equation, x3 was a negative 1, x2 then would also be a negative 1. So x2 is a negative 1. Now these are all of the components for a vector inside the basis for the null space. So x1 would correspond to the first component, negative 1. Uh, x2, of course, would be the second, and x3 would be the last. Negative 1, negative 1, and 1 are, is a vector inside the basis for the null space. I sh should just say this is the basis for the null space. One other thing is let's find what they call the nullility of, uh, of this matrix, I suppose, this original matrix. What is its nullility? Well, the nullility is, uh, is equivalent to the dimension of the null space. 
and or rather the basis of the null space which we found here and this dimension right here and do this is a set there's only one vector inside that means its dimension is one that means the nullility of this entire thing the, um in case you're wondering i'm pronouncing nullility really badly it looks like that okay yeah nullility we it's one because it's equivalent to the dimension of the basis for the null space which we just found right here there's only one vector inside therefore it's one if there were two vectors the dimension would be two and the nullity would be two so anyways that's how you do that thank you for watching